Tired of the unhappy marriage routine, day in and day out? We're talking about your marriage and what you can do to make your daily contacts with each other at the least civil, at the best, pleasurable and fulfilling. We've got some suggestions for you tonight, so stay tuned for a content-loaded episode of Recharge Your Marriage coming up right now. Hello to all, I'm Zev Halpern, and thanks for joining us for Recharge Your Marriage. How's it been going for the two of you? Are you getting out a bit, doing some together things? I'm rooting for you both to do the things you need to do to get your marriage on track. We have a great, informative, and stimulating show, which includes a special guest, Dr. Sinclair Gray a talented life coach and a passionate speaker on many valuable subjects who will share his life coaching wisdom and expertise. We look forward to Dr. Gray's insight. Tonight, we welcome back the It Takes Two Players Improv Troupe, who will be fortifying our understanding of how we really act in our marriages. Tonight's show will have three segments aimed at moving your marriage forward. So I did a day at that magical place with the family on a recent Florida road trip. While I wasn't sure I was up to another visit to the kingdom, it turned out to be a great family experience. The family asked me to take pictures with the characters. So here I am with, I'll let you guess, everybody loves her. While I was standing with her, I told her what I do professionally, and I asked her, if she had some wisdom for married couples. She said she's seen huge issues on a daily basis when we bring our kids to her. Some of them are fighting while the kids are with me. She offered some magic dust and added these wise nuggets. You have to believe in your relationship. A running start is a good thing. Guess she would know. People need to take a look at themselves and if need be, help themselves or get some help earlier than later. Well, thank you, special lady. You might have missed your avocation. Well done. So as promised, here's the magic dust, which I sincerely wish will help each and every one of your marriages. Here we go. One, two, three. But let's be real, which we try hard to be on this show, even if it's painful and discouraging. It's just going to take some effort on both of your parts, beyond the magic dust, to move your marriage forward. Have a little faith, you two. Well, let's get to the Marriage Matters segment. Let's introduce that it takes two players to get us in the mood for the matter segment. Who is this person? Who are you now? This is not the person I married. I don't know who you are. You used to, <laughs> you used to be the one, and now you're just you're stuck on your phone. Your house is a mess. Dinner. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know who you are or who I am anymore. Who's this person in my house that I don't even know? Now there's a guy taking a private, hard look at his relationship.
perhaps not able to communicate to her how much he really wants the marriage to change for the better. Well, here's a powerful change agent to put in your marriage medicine cabinet that has no warning label. Encouragement. Encouragement, unlike judgment and discouragement, can be a powerful nutrient that grows and sustains good relationships. Encouragement is good, healthy relationship food. An encouraging marriage is a place we're likely to see our spouse's good qualities as well as their efforts to do the right thing for us instead of the wrong thing. So many marriages run on negative fuel, and there's plenty of that which serves to rev up the blame and add criticism scenarios which push us away from each other. Take a look at this couple. Come on, why do you even bother taking that class? The house is a mess. I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to get move somewhere. I'm in a stalemate. I'm in some pause. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the dishes are, are not done, the dogs are peeing everywhere, there's everything just all around the house. This is exhausting. This is absolutely exhausting. I want to do better, and I'm trying to get out of this rut I'm but in. But if you stop taking your class, you'll have more time to take care of the house. But the house can wait. There's always going to be dishes. There's always going to be the dog. There's always going to be somebody needing something. You'll have so much extra time, though, because that class is three hours a, a day. <sighs> I need to get out of this rut. It's two days a week, but it's still terrible. Hey, you've been taking that class for quite some time. I am so exhausted. I'm I so tired. I'm so proud of you for taking all this extra time to better yourself, you know? The house is kind of a mess, but you know, the kids and I have been pitching in to, to you know, pick up what we can do. Yeah. And, yeah, and you yeah. really, you've been doing such a good job. And I mean, you know, Aww. anything else you need about this, you know, with help with the class, just let me know. Oh, thank you, you're such a good husband. When we encourage and praise our partners for their efforts on our behalf, we send messages that positively charge and reboot our marriages. It's the opposite of those, gotcha now, caught you're doing everything so wrong and wrong, messages followed by streams of disapproval and judgment. Take a look at this couple's way of doing business. Do you have to leave that there? Why, why can't you just, when you take your tie off, why can't you walk in the bedroom and put it on the hook where it goes? Why do you insist on leaving it? Okay, here oh comes gosh. mom again. Just having, having- I'm not having, your mother. Okay, well, my mom used to clean up after me, you know? Well, I am not your mother. I am your wife. I'm telling you, clean up after yourself. Well, maybe you can clean up sometimes. Do you go out and work all day? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, doing what? Taking care of the kids? Wow. You know, it takes a lot of work to do what I do. I go out there, I bust my butt all day, and then I come home. I and you leave your stinky socks on the table. <sighs> Is that what you they wanted to bring to They smell bad. They look bad. We put food there. We have snacks on the coffee table. And you leave your stinky, smelly socks, dirty socks, on the coffee table. You want table me to take the tie away? I'll take the tie. I'll take the socks. I'll just throw them out, all right? Fine. Why do you insist on leaving your shoes here by the coffee table? <sighs> Why can't you take them off at the front door? where the mat is, where the shoes are for everybody else in the house. Why do you need to come in here tracking them on, in on the carpet? Okay, bef before you get into it, I know I, I, I messed up, I left some stuff out. You know I'm trying to get better at this, but I need to get into a more of a routine and it just takes time to, to get into that. If you, know, if you didn't notice, I, I took out the garbage today and that's actually why the, the, my shoes are out here. Cause, you did, yeah. you did. I did recognize that. I'm sorry. I'm just very stressed out. And you know, small things like that set me off sometimes. I I'm, I'm sorry. I it's, I, I, I know you're working on it. You have improved in other ways. I give you credit. You have improved in other ways. Yeah. But the shoes on the carpet. I know. It, it'll never happen again. If you're looking for a place to start a positive trend in your marriage, practice encouragement, not judgment. Catch your partner doing something good okay or right and acknowledge it 
and you'll tap into the core feelings of your partner. Your relationship will be energized into a more collaborative, caring, and supportive enterprise with the dials calibrated to help each other be the best you both can be. This can have exponentially positive effects on your relationship. Consider practicing praise and encouragement in your marriage rather than the criticism and negative disapproval, which so often characterizes unhappy marriages. Now, I mentioned practice because offering praise and encouragement to our partners when the situation warrants isn't so easy. It takes practice. It just frickin' does. I'll bet you can find me doing something right. Please catch me doing something right. You can if you just please look and pay a little attention to me. Here at the Recharge Your Marriage Show, please be certain that we're listening to your feedback and encourage your comments. So to help your marriage get on the right track, I have a free gift for your marriage. Just go to closermarriage.com right now and download Recharge Your Marriage Guide for him and for her, starting steps. This is something you can do for your marriage right now. So take me up on my free offer. Okay, now walk with me to the bedroom for the sexpectations part of the show. Tonight, in the sexpectation segment, would you please join me in considering a practical mindset, a lens to view your marriage, however long you've been together. The twists and turns, highs and lows of marriage result in all kinds of sexual pleasures for some and deep sexual frustration for others. Someone, you know, one of those someones flying around out there that we're always hearing about? Well, they said it's all about how we look at things. So consider that how you define your marriage has a great deal to do with what transpires between you two. I offer for your consideration that if your marriage has trended more to companion than sexual partner, but you have occasional sex, you might be a companion with benefits. Want you to consider a marriage with benefits. So friends with benefits meet marriage with benefits. Marriage companion with benefits, Zev. Are you kidding? What are you talking about? I'm talking about a pragmatic model, a bit lighter for those that like to have a little sexy playtime in the marriage, but have all but thrown in the towel. You might consider modifying the script of your marriage to, hey, can we just play around a little sometimes? And we'll see what happens. Take a look at this couple's approach to lighting the sexual fire. Hey, hon. Hi. What you got going on what? tonight? Um, the <laughs> usual. Yes. The usual, yeah. You, uh, you want a date? Um, not right now. Come on, it's been a while. I'm ready for a date. Yeah, well, there's a bottle of lotion in the spare room. Go help yourself. Okay, that's a bit harsh. I'm busy. I, I'm busy. I'm stressed out. I just don't feel like it. Okay? Just it, it, go help yourself. Oh my god, who are you? That was really... Okay, you know what? I've never been... I've never not wanted a date so quickly. Welcome to my world. I'm home. Oh! Yes, you. Ooh. Hi. You certainly are. Doing a little dishes. Hi. Yes. Bubbles, hey. Bubbles. I like bubbles. You like bubbles? Oh. We can... I like bubbles. Yeah, because yeah. right upstairs right now is a very hot bath running, <gasps> and there are bubbles in that bath. I like bubbles. How necessary are those dishes? What dishes? Right. <laughs> Come on. Here's what you can do. Look your best. Experiment. 
freshen up a little and try that monthly. Try to be a bit creative in what you bring to the monthly playground, sandbox, or bed, or wherever. You're a companion with benefits. This is something you can start to look forward to after you dread it a bit. You might be apprehensive, angry, or stuck about how you feel about your spouse, but these are all obstacles that can be removed or held off to allow some room to get something going. It's been a while. It's difficult for you two to break the ice and get it started. It's awkward, no question about it. Can you do awkward? Sure you can. Have a peek at these two. Can we, do you, do you want me anymore? Hmm? Want you, of course. We haven't, we haven't done it in so long. Can we, yeah, I, I just feel like, I, I, can we just try? I'm just something. I'm, I'm not feeling good today, so it's just. But you say that all the time, and it's been so long, and I just feel like you don't. I, I feel like you don't want me anymore. Well, and I, it's I, not. No, it's not about you. Okay, it's 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 just. I'm not feeling ready and right these days. Well, and I, and I don't know what. It, I'm sorry. Can I'm, we? Can, I, I, I'm, just I'm comfortable no, can talking we? about it. I'm sorry. Um, honey, do you still find me attractive? Of course. Okay, because you don't ever even touch me at all. We haven't, you know we haven't. We've not talked about this and we need to talk about it. I don't feel at all desirable. And is it me? I desire you, yeah, of course. I, you don't act like it ever, ever. Is it something about me or is it something with you? I don't know. To be honest, um, okay. I, I don't okay. know. Getting older. Do you, are you okay with that? Do you, do you like it this way? I don't like it this way. I don't know. It, I'm kind of. I'm. I'm not sure how I. To be honest, I'm not sure how I am about it anymore. Can we just try? Okay. But here's the absolute true reality. You visited each other before in the chamber of love and sex, however long it's been. Take a second and get that personal file in your memory. Yeah, it was you and him and her and you. And that's all you wanted to do. You can stop by for a visit again. Think about it. A companion with benefits marital sex arrangement could be so much better than status quo cave mates or just plain roommates. For a start, just try to explore, experiment, and play a little together. Confer about what and where the playground will be and set a time to meet each other there. The big event, you know the one I'm talking about, doesn't have to happen every time. I know that the word just doesn't mean you're going to do anything at all because it's just not always so easy, and that's understandable. However, a bit of discomfort might transport you through a tunnel or across a bridge to a place with some kind of pleasurable, stimulating benefits on the other side. We can influence our relationship outcomes. Is your marriage a chapter where you can turn the page? Or have you already finished the book? Just because your marriage has trended towards problems doesn't mean you have to close the book on the sexual part of your marriage. Open your mind and open your heart a bit. Plan a visit to one of your favorite former hangouts, meaning your spouse, yes, this wife or husband of yours, the person you had sex with, and some of it you remember was good. Just let what happened happen. A marital companion with benefits as a way to view your marriage is something you both just might want to consider. Marriage Pulse today.
tonight, we have a special guest, Dr. Sinclair Gray III, with over 12 years experience as a life coach and a successful author of four published books, including Seeds of Freedom, Inspirational Messages for Ordinary People with Extraordinary Potential. Dr. Gray has over 16 years as an inspirational speaker to diverse populations and audiences, young and old. Welcome, Dr. Gray. Thank you so much, Zaya, for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So we talked about encouragement tonight. How do you feel about encouragement as a change agent um, for people, for couples, for relationships? Well, encouragement is definitely something that every couple should do every day. If any, any couple wants to do well and wants to see their marriage uh, survive rough times and rocky moments, they have to encourage, pe they have to encourage each other every day, um, praising them, giving them compliments, and encourage them to be all that they were called to be. Uh, too many times people come into relationships and they forget who they are. But the point of marriage and the point of your partner, your spouse, is to help better you, help you to achieve your goals and help you to reach your dreams. So encouragement should always be every day. It's not just a one-time thing. It should not be with something within limited within a certain amount of years. But for a true couple to succeed, they have to encourage each other every day. Because let's think about it. You marriage someone for good, uh, for bad, for a lifetime. They become your partner. They become your best friend. So why wouldn't you encourage your best friend in business, in life, in whatever area that they need to be in? Always encourage. It's always a wonderful thing for every couple to encourage. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people always just gravitate to the negative? The positive is just so hard you know, to get a grasp on. People just mm -hmm. seem to just roll to the negative. Well, being positive, why wouldn't they be positive? Why is it so difficult? Unf unfortunately, too many people think that positive is boring. Um, negativity runs the society. The more negative it is, the juicier it gets. And people tend to uh, elevate the negative. And anytime someone speaks positive, they have this concept, oh, you can't be that positive all the time. Why are you so happy? And that's one of the things that we have to do. We have to dispel that, dispel that myth that, hey, it's okay to be positive. It's okay to be happy. I always tell people, you have, to make, you have to give yourself permission to be happy. If you give yourself permission to be happy, then you will become ha a happier person, which is internal. No one on the outside can make you happy. Happiness is internal. And when you decide for yourself to become happy, you'll be happy, you'll live happy, and you'll project happiness towards everyone. I talk a lot about sexual procrastination mm -hmm. with couples, people who just fall out of the habit, you know, and they just can't get back into it. What would you tell, you know, couples how to overcome pr procrastination? I would say get back into the bedroom. Have fun. Sex is not just a chore. Sex is a wonderful thing. Get back, make love, act crazy, go to the park, do something freaky, do something crazy. Because what happens, the more you procrastinate in sex, the, longer, the, more, the more discouraged you'll become with your partner. So for couples who want to energize their life, go have sex. Do something that you've never done before. Talk to your partner, have fantasies, go on romantic trips, do something in the park, do something on the beach get crazy and realize it's okay to be freaky with your with your mate. There's nothing wrong with being sexual with your mate because trust me, a happy sex life will lead to a whole lot of benefits. I like what you said, companion with benefits. So hey, get back, don't procrastinate. After you watch the show with your spouse, hey, turn off the lights, put some music on, throw some roses down, have fun. It's between you and your partner. Have sex like it's crazy. What if one of your, your partners just so, um, not, not willing, you know, just unwilling, you know, to jump in. You know, you say, get back in that bedroom, right. but, you know, the <laughs> other one goes, hey, you, you can go into the bedroom yourself and, you know, and have a good time, you know, of it. How do you get at that, you know, break the ice, you know, just, you know, hey, come on, honey, we used to do this, you know, why don't we just get back to it? But it's not, I, you know, I find and I hear a lot of couples, okay. it's not so easy, just not so easy. And it breaks my heart because I think what happens, now you're looking at something that's uh, maybe mental. You have to find out why is that person not engaging in sexual activity? Is there something wrong with their mentality? Are they emotionally broken? Are they physically tired? I think what you have to do, you have to find out the source on why this person is not engaged or does not have an interest 
and sexual activity. And once the person tells you why, then I think it's incumbent upon the spouse to work with the partner to say it's not over, that I love you, that I care for you. But also, now that's good. See, exactly. That's, a, that, that, that's exactly good. That, it's that communication. Exactly. It's not like uh, I need you for my needs. Exactly. It's that I need you because I need you. Exactly. You, you can't stop complimenting your partner. Just because your partner may not want to hop in the bed with you, you still have to say, honey, you look well. You smell nice. Thank you for dinner. Thank you for just being the best person. A lot of times, small things can help open up the doors and all of a sudden it can rekindle and renew that sex life. And that's a great thing, small things, exactly. start small. So tell us a little bit about you know, your coaching. And uh, you, you got a new book. Yes, I'm, ha to hear I'm happy. I'm happy. My new book just became released uh, the other day. It's titled, So You Think You Want a Date, Thoughts and Reflections on Wise and, Six on S wise and Skillful Dating. What I've mm. done with that, I've taken ordinary individuals and I've looked at the problems that many people have with dating. And one of the premises that I've dealt with in the book is that a lot of people have not looked at themselves. They're so busy looking for someone to complete them when in essence, no one should be completing you, they should be complimenting you. So there's a lot of tips and discussions around the whole concept of dating. As far as life coaching, one of the things I do, I do with couples, I do with individuals about their life, trying to find out where they want to go in life, uh, their goals, their aspirations, some of their dreams, what's stopping them from getting to the next level, helping them to overcome hurdles, and pretty much just helping them to become the best that they're supposed to be. A lot of times there's roadblocks. So I act as a drill sergeant for them, I act as a counselor, but I also act as someone who cares for them and will push them when they don't even want to push themselves. It's my job to see the potential and promise in them and help bring it out of them. I'd like to get a copy of that book. Most definitely. It sounds, it sounds like a good one. Well, you know, you've been very inspirational. Thank and, you. you know, you're an inspirational guy and um, really appreciate Thank you, know, you, you coming out tonight. Um, thanks so much for sharing your wisdom. Thank you so um, much. To check out Dr. Gray's services and programs, Dr. Gray at SinclairGray.org. And Dr. Gray's website, www.SinclairGray.org. And or pick up the phone and call him, 678-871-9615. I'm sure it'd be very inspirational. To contact the It Takes Two Players, call improv at chrispanic.com or call Chris, 240-428-8024. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Stay tuned for our next show, jam-packed with info, guests, and stimulating surprises. Email comments and opinions to zev at closermarriage.com. Like us on Facebook, connect with us on Twitter, and subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. And finally, listen, hug, kiss, talk, touch, validate, empathize, cuddle a little, laugh a little. And for all of us in these challenging times, be kind to those you meet. We're all fighting a great battle. We're all in need of some loving kindness. I'm Zev Halpern. See you next time for Recharge Your Marriage.